Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Carla Keith and I am the CRCNA's Communications um, Manager. Um, also look after the education program as well. Um, so um, I'll be the facilitator of today's session. Um, I have with me um, my CEO, Anne Stunzner, who will be making a short um, welcome and introduction shortly. Um, I just wanted to run through a bit of housekeeping and overview. Um, I, I'm sure that we all are well versed um, in how webinars operate these days, but just for those who um, might need a refresher, please, please keep your microphone muted during our session. Um, use the chat function or chat function for uh, any of your technical issues that you may have. I'll be monitoring that through the session. Feel free to write um, your questions in the Q&A function. Um, and we'll share those at the end of the session with our participants during the Q&A. Um, and also just to be aware that this session is being recorded um, and we may use it to promote the CRCNA and project in the future. So if you have any concerns about that, um, feel free to um, keep your um, camera off um, and stay muted. Uh, we don't generally share the, the, the questions or the Q&As and chat functions on any of our recordings either. Um, so to welcome for all, to all of those who have just joined us, um, just a brief run through of what we're going to do today. Um, as I mentioned, my CEO Anne Stonsner will be um, shortly welcoming you all um, to this session. We'll hear from the chairman of Tui Plantations, um, Mark Ashley will also um, make a presentation today. Um, I'll be sharing uh, their presentation from my computer, so please uh, forgive any, any uh, delays in, in uh, executing their instructions as we move through. Uh, and then, like I said, at the end, we will be doing a QA and a um, and we welcome all questions and anything that we can't um, answer today, I'm sure that um, our, our team will take that on board and respond to you uh, in a timely way. Um, so I'm going to now move uh, over to all throw to Anne, who will um, like to welcome you all um, to the session today. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think we're going to have the same XR okay. problem that we had before. Um, first of all, congratulations on the project. And most importantly, um, I acknowledge the Townsville of the traditional owned custodians of the land where we meet here in Townsville, the Wollaraka people and the Bindle people, and pay my respects to their elders present, past and emerging, and their ongoing connection to country. I also pay my respects to the Tiwi people, their elders past, present and emerging. This project highlights the ongoing and contemporary connection to country of all First Nations people and provides for the future of that connection by looking to create long-term sustainable models for development and growth. The CRC for Developing Northern Australia invests in industry-led research and development, which enables the economic growth and development of Northern Australia. We invest in projects in the areas of agriculture, food, health service delivery, and traditional owner-led business development and enterprises in these areas. This project came to us uh, through an open funding call last year, and I acknowledge the work of our senior project manager, Kristen Nunn, and the team from Tiwi Plantations Corporation and Forest and Wood Products Australia and all other project participants and the Melbourne Island community and Tiwi Land Council for getting this project up and running. Importantly, I acknowledge that the project lead, the Tiwi Plantations Corporation, is an Aboriginal owned and run company and always has been. They've worked with the Tiwi community to build a project that acknowledges the need for sustainable long-term economic development planning for their community. Tropical forestry, provides that pathway and the project team have committed to working with the community to increase their scientific knowledge and capacity to build a skilled workforce capable of capitalising on the enormous opportunities sustainable forestry and forest products provides. As an ex-forester, I'm particularly delighted to see this project get up. And you can continue to follow the progress of this project on our website and on social media. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Anne. Uh, we can now um, move to our presentation. Hopefully um, everybody can, can see this. Um, I'd like to welcome and introduce um, the chairman of the Tibi Plantations Corporation, Kim Putamari. Putamari. And um, I'll throw to uh, Kim who's joining us by phone today. So um, hopefully um, the connection is okay and we can hear him. Um, Kim, over to you. Um, it's Mark Ashley here from TPC. Um, both Kim and Gibson are just in a car, just trying to get to an area where they get better reception, yeah? 
So um, in their words, they're about a few minutes away. So what I suggest we do, um, if participants are comfortable, perhaps just um, kick off with the um, presentation and those guys will dial in, um, jump in. They've got the online link on their phones and they'll jump into the presentation when they're able to do so. Okay, everyone can hear Mark. Yes, it help, it helps when you when you uh, turn off your um, speakers to turn it back on. Sorry about that, Kim. We were, were you available there to uh, to run through that presentation? Yeah, we've got Kim and Gibbo um, there. I don't have access to emails where they are, um, but we've got them here on the phone. So hopefully they can um, log in through my feed here. But we'll give it a go. You want to hand okay. over to you? Yips, Gibson. Yeah, yeah, good. Good morning. How are you? Hello. Yeah, they won't respond, Gibbo. They're on mute. So just go through and do your introductions, yeah? Yep, no worries. Where you go? Why is, why is the forestry important to you? Well, forestry is important for our employment. They've been going since 1960 and employment for our people. That's the only proper job is on TV for our people so they can learn how to look after the land, how to manage. In terms of the research, Gibbo, why is this research project important for TPC? Oh, it's important because the outcome, you know, how the outcome is done with CSIRO, we've been doing a lot of stuff on the island where they can manage water and look after the land, and the environment around Kiwi. Hello, what animal? An animal as well. Yep. Fantastic. Thanks, uh, Gibson, our deputy chair. Just checking in, Carla. Can you still hear us? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes. You're yeah, coming through loud and clear. Ah, so you can hear Gibson as well. Sorry, I'm on a I'm out bushing a double location, and the internet's not the best as well. No, the challenges of working in remote stress. <laughs> it's uh, it's coming through loud and clear. All right. So what we, we might just keep on. So uh, Kim um, and Gibbo will stay on the line. Um, in terms of the Tiwi, for the people's backgrounds, basically it's one of the what is the largest production land use in the NT tropical forestry uh, after partial brief grazing. There's a significant resource um, around, um, and there's three major projects that people will be aware. So we've got a casual-based wood chip, mahogany, timber, sand, and wood, and oil pharmaceuticals at other locations, both in northern uh, WA and the Kimberley, across the top end into Cape York, and in the Douglas Daly area. Next slide, please. So the previous slide, we'll just leave it on that one. That's, yep. Yeah, we'll leave it on this one. This one's really important. So this is the, the eight landowning groups of Tiwi. That's fine. The Tiwi Islands and the significant basis for this project, and it's really important when working with um, Aboriginal communities across Northern Australia, is TPC's um, representative of all clan groups. Um, and it associates and reports back to all clan groups um, in terms uh, of the project. The project, sorry, it's skipping around. We're going to the next slide. No, we're going backwards. Onto the next slide, please. Yeah, there. So the project is, is significant. Um, you'll see the, the green areas, so the area of forested um, country on Melbourne, those islands, those areas were um, uh, uh, based around and located on the soil types, but also the biodiversity of the area. So there's significant surveys done and when these were established to avoid high biodiversity errors and um, place the forestry in areas where the soils were right but didn't um, compromise the um, biodiversity integrity of the island. The challenge from that you'll see is that we have lots of discrete little areas. So from a management perspective, that makes it pretty challenging in terms of you know, getting moving timber to the port, but also in terms of managing fire, managing weeds, doing threatened species surveys, which we do all as a part of our, our work. Um, having such a significant resource over effectively 140 square kilometre area is really challenging. Next slide, please. Um, 
the it's a pretty significant resource that's been established by Tiwi. The figures are there, 1.1.3 million um, bone diametric tons. Um, we say it's worth millions of dollars. It's in excess. It varies depending on the markets, clearly, but the valuation is well in excess of 140 US million dollars. Today, we've exported 16 shipments of wood chip and additional eight ships of um, hardwood pine logs that were established in the 1960s and 1980s as a part of original forestry trials on the island. So 24 ships for a deep water port um, to Asian markets. Next slide, please. Um, so from our perspective, there's currently a resource now, of, uh, mainly Cacian Mangium, 30,000 hectares, all other species have been sold to hardwood. In 2015, we signed a uh, a, a agreement with the company Mitsui um, to sell wood chip. That was our first big um, export agreement. Since then, we've partnered with uh, Midway and are creating new markets into um, Asia um, in locations in Japan, Asia, and Indonesia. Next slide, please. And that's just a, a picture there showing the, the, the wood chip stockpile. And our loading port. This is one of the crews. Um, the jobs are significant. So during periods of peak production, we employ um, about 120 people at peak employment, and our best employment rate of Tiwi's been up almost towards 40%. Next slide, please. Yep, yeah, next slide, please. Um, the projects, like all major projects, um, has its challenges. Um, and, you know, we've listed some of them there. I, I won't go into those specifically. I, I think it's fair to say that um, and Tony Price, the CEO of our partners at Midway, um, spoke to the ABC Country Hour to Matt Brand last week about this. COVID has really affected the TV business significantly. Um, yeah, that's right, Gibbo. And, and so... And in terms of what, what that's meant for the business is that effectively, you know, the, the slowdown in the um, economic activities associated with uh, COVID principally in China, but also in Japan has decreased the demand and meant that we've had a pretty lean too. So in the last 18 months, um, we've only exported uh, one ship load of uh, pulp, uh, wood chips. In the longer term, what that means for us is we need a strategy, the company TPC needs a strategy to manage that downturn. And that's why this research is so fundamental to that. It provides us an opportunity to develop a better product, an improved product, a product that's potentially more marketable um, and one that can underpin the business going forward. Next slide, please. So introducing the project, um, this is about maximising the efforts that are already out there and ensuring that Tiwi get access to the best forestry technology, both from a production and from a research perspective. Um, and it's a, quite a unique partnership you know, between Midway, Tiwi Land Council, Northern Territory Department of Primary Industries, Melbourne University, that's you know, one of the um, um, premier forest research organisations in the world, um, Charles Darwin University have exceptional expertise in engaging um, Aboriginal people into the workforce and doing workforce studies associated with that. And of course, Forest Wood and Products Australia who are contributing and manage um, levies paid by the industry and add to those levies for research activities. Next slide, please. <laughs> um, and it's been a long time coming. So this project and people uh, like Gerd have been involved in um, identifying this project for a period of 10 years um, and we finally got there. So it's a tremendous um, way forward for us. It, next slide, please. I'm um, not a forest researcher, so for all the researchers on the line, please feel free um, to add some comments at the end. But basically the, the program has three key components. So at a higher strategic level, um, 
it's about looking and developing um, some current eucalyptus species that we've had on the island growing as a trial for 20 years. Eucalyptus bolita is the preferred product for wood chips internationally. Um, and so we've been growing these in a limited area at several, three sites on the island. Um, and this first program is looking about their um, agronomic performance. Um, we'll be linking some of the best genetic research that Melbourne Uni has to offer about ensuring that the species that we plant into a second rotation is the most uh, productive species that we can have. So TPC um, is looking to move toward um, a second rotation planting. We're currently negotiating with you know, several investors around that. The idea is that we want a product that can uh, um, be grown to maximise those returns, both for the investment partner, um, both for our partners like Midway, but also for TV. So this, this is critical to us. We want to make sure we have the best genetics available to grow some of the best eucalyptus bleeder in the world. Um, the second one's about looking at potentially program is about some uh, using that genetic improvement through that tree, tree breeding, like getting genetics into the better and looking at if we can diversify some of the products that we have. So I'll leave that to people like Gerd and, and Barbara to, to talk about this, but um, wood chips, are, you know, they're a, they're a viable product and there's certainly a product that's in demand. But if we can do some trials about what capacity does Eucalyptus have for other products around higher value hardwood products, um, that will be fantastic. So that's about you know, testing their capacity for sawing and milling and looking at things like peeling, which is a process that you create laminates um, from spinning of logs and peeling off very thin sections of timber. The last part of the program is about trying to ensure the, that the business of TPC achieves really significant outcomes um, for both uh, Tiwi, but looking at ways of the things that we've, you know, learned there, the Tiwi have learned there over the last, their journey of 20 years, how does that apply and how can that be replicated and, and provide assistance to other communities across remote Australia? Um, particularly with a northern focus, obviously. There are you know, communities doing that things at the moment. So CDU have done some fantastic work with other industries about uh, modelling and introducing um, and uh, coming up with best practice approaches, ensuring Aboriginal people engage in industry. So that's part of that. So this is the, this is the people component of the program. It's about, you know, the, the, the program, the research has always been about, let's get the best tree we can grow um, create new products, really underpin the long-term economic viability of TPC, but ensure that it remains Tiwi driven and Tiwi get the benefits, but also take it from a, another broader perspective. How can, how can other um, uh, Aboriginal communities across the North um, potentially learn from the things that we've learned and see how replicable it is? Next slide, please. Gibbo. Yeah. Uh, all them trees and eucalyptus hybrids that were already in the ground, we test them with all the fertilizer, and then they're going to grow up seven years old. They're already in the ground. We've done all the research with I help with the CSIRO mob, and then they came out. I had seven TV boys and three TV girls. We've done that project. It's already in the ground. The trees are growing big. That's right. And those trees, yeah. so they're a really significant resource and they've put yeah. us a long way ahead because it's enabled the, the program, the researchers to come in and start with some mature trees for that genetic base. So it's, it's yeah. one step ahead, which is fantastic. So there's some pictures of our, our lead researchers from Team 1. We all know who they are. On to the next slide, please. Glenn Samson was there. I we done it with Glenn. Yep. And my TV TV mob having plants and trees. We done it ourselves. That's right. They're already in the ground. Yep. They're really big now. I seen them last week. I took it right around the plantation. Yep. And I was amazed what I see in my own eyes. The trees are they're really healthy and big. That's and and we need it 
We need this money to do the second rotation. We're getting help from CIC mob, good. And then our CDU. We've done everything. But we need that second rotation to go ahead. We need the money to help my people can do it. Me and Kim, we encourage it now. Our people, we can do it. Fantastic. TV people, TV people can do it. Absolutely. So, hey, Mark, yep. Kim, our was chairman. You and, and Jay Sensor went for Floyd. Yep. Remember, we did not trace. Yeah, that's that's the ones, Kim. That's that, right, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, the eucalyptus blade has shown you know, a capacity to grow well. Um, and so that's a significant starting point for the research. And this is program one. So that's about optimizing productivity and profitability. It's about looking at, you know, how they how they perform in those harvesting and site preps, but also evaluating for the growth matter, in seeing how the species interacts with the, the leaf litter, the nutrients and fertilizer strategies. So that really basic and much needed um, plantation. Management. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's good. Next. And so I won't go into the technical details because I um, won't do it justice for our key researchers around this project. But it's all about trying to understand how they perform at, at the soil level um, and as a basis. Next, next, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So basically you can see this program is about trying to, yep, okay. Thank you. So we'll leave it on that slide there. The eucalyptus played a while. I think we've talked about it. It's, it's growing there, it's got rapid growth. It also exhibits extremely high pests and disease resistance. Um, and it has some capacity for soil and timber production. So it's about enabling us to diversify potentially the products that we sell. Um, so TPC set of being reliant upon essentially where three uh, wood chip markets would potentially could uh, provide access, you know, to other high value products, which we've already done through, we've sold all of the, the past hardwood uh, trials that were established on the islands. We did the last shipment of those. So we've got current contracts with our partners in Midway into China. Um, so there's certainly a viable hardwood market and we really want to be able to diversify the product base. Next slide, please. Here's some pictures of people taking genetic samples and you'll be able to ask the researchers around the technical components of that. The squared samples of the bark. Next slide, please. So basically, this is a, the third program. It's about ensuring that, you know, the we're doing everything that we can about um, developing and ensuring that what we do is accountable um, to Tiwi people to ensure that we get maximum outcomes from a community perspective for employment and social benefits. Um, and, you know, it's about plugging into some, some employment, regional employment models that CD has developed um, and looking at ways of how we really um, ensure this benefit for TV in the longer term. And again, I think Pascal, uh, who leads that project, is online. He can ask some questions around that as we go through. Next slide, please. Um, finally, just, just the key message for us is that this research is about pulling together some of the best experts in this space from... Melbourne Uni, Charles Darwin Uni, Wood Forest and Wood Products Australia and the CRC, um, and combining that with our industry partners, so PMP Midway and TPC US, of course. So it's quite a unique project. It builds upon a, a long project history, and that's the strength of this. And I think that's the real strength of the CRC, enabling these sort of really down-to-earth, industry-driven um, projects to come together. So we'd just like to pass our thanks on to everyone involved and all the hard work of, of particularly the, 
the research team, we all put in a lot of hours to get it through. And our thanks very much to the CRC and the CRC, CRC, CRC board for supporting the project. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate um, that. And uh, it's always tricky to line up um, slides with uh, uh, talking remotely. So uh, forgive me for uh, skipping through some of those. Um, I have now gone through and um, asked people to unmute. Um, and if, if you would like to talk uh, or if there are any questions that you have for anybody uh, on the line, um, we are now all able to or should be able to um, unmute ourselves and, and talk freely. So. Um, I mean, I don't know, um, Glenn, I know that you're on the line and obviously um, Midway is a, is a really critical partner in, in, this, in this project and in um, the operations from on the Tiwi in terms of delivering that um, high value product to market. I don't know if you uh, would like to say any words on behalf of Midway and, and your involvement in, that, in the project. Uh, yeah, thanks, Carla. Um, yeah, we're, we're very excited to, to be working with the Tiwi and the other project participants. Uh, obviously, um, the, the project's got some really unique uh, opportunities and challenges, I suppose, in, in terms of what, we, what we, we're delivering for Tiwi around employment and, uh, and, and other outcomes on, on, on the socioeconomic front. And then, obviously, we're, we're working within a highly sensitive environment um, so from a management perspective it's quite challenging and and this project's going to be pretty important for us uh, we want to develop best management practices um, you know we're going to be able to do that with the work that chris and luber and and, and freddie are doing on the on the silver culture and nutrition program and obviously we want to um, we want to deploy the best available genetics uh, so um, we're pretty excited about some of the work that Gerd and, and Umar are doing with the genomics. It, it does allow us to really accelerate our breeding program and, and bring in to, um, you know, utilise the material that we've put out there and, and, and really sort of pull that into a breeding program, which may, you know, historically would have been 10 to 15 years to, to develop. Um, we, can, we can shorten that up to three to five years, so we're pretty excited about that. And then, and then obviously some of the CDU work in, in terms of understanding, you know, how, how it's all pulled together and, and, and I, suppose, uh, I suppose providing uh, that information for other participants around the NT and, and far north Queensland and WA to consider, you know, if uh, they want to get into forestry um, and, and other, other activities, what, what, what can they learn from it? So we're pretty excited by it. Thanks so much um, for that, Glenn. Um, I'm just uh, wondering, um, Gerd, I know that, that you're on the line uh, from the University of Melbourne, and I was wondering, um, Mark touched on obviously the COVID impact and certainly it's uh, impacting on, on the shipment and, and the availability of, or accessibility of getting that um, product to market. I was wondering how um, you and your team are navigating, um, you know, obviously down in Melbourne there, how you navigate um, doing the research and the research that you need to do and how and how you can continue to uh, or how you're using the resources um, available on TV to help um, with your research given that um, obviously with COVID we have a number of restrictions in, in, in movement and how we can freely travel around um, to and from places. Yeah, thank, thanks Carla. We actually have been pretty fortunate in that that we uh, made good use of, of a number of uh, windows during which we could travel to the islands. So we have been able to, uh, to sneak in a number of field visits, uh, which was important for initial sample collection, so that we could minimize the holdups, initially uh, minimize the holdups that otherwise travel restrictions would have, uh, would have caused. That would not have been possible without the excellent help of the TV on, on, on the ground uh, with uh, with a number of TV people helping us with the sample collections and providing excellent uh, technical assistance there. Uh, at another level, it has been very difficult to get our postgraduate students in the country. Uh, and this is about to be completed with uh, uh, one, one student from Indonesia already, like Freddie already in the country. Uh, Listia, also a student from Indonesia about to uh, come to Australia in September 
and uh, Esther, a student from Nigeria with expertise in uh, wood utilization, coming to us in October. Uh, that was quite a, a difficult process to get travel restriction exemptions for them. And again, I have to acknowledge the, the support and help uh, by, uh, from, from the CRC, from Forest and Wood Products Australia, from the NT government, and also from our federal government uh, with responsibility for the CRCs, all of which supported us in our efforts uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the Office of Home Affairs uh, to get our students in the country. It has been a number of times uh, difficult more recently, where uh, particularly Chris and Luba's team uh, have traveled to the islands, but had to return because of new lockdown restrictions without actually having been able to, uh, to do what they came, uh, came for. But maybe Chris can expand on that. For the time being, we, we uh, have only minimal disruptions what, in terms of, what, uh, uh, of field work. Uh, but we have to see how it's uh, developing further. Hopefully by the end of the year, uh, all these issues of traveling and lockdown will be minimized. Thanks so much, Gerd. Um, I have a, a question from Mila um, from the NT, who works with the NT yeah. government. And um, Mila, I have unmuted you. So I was wondering if you'd like to, to ask that question, you'd probably do it far more justice than, than I'd be able to. I'm not too sure um, who would be able to, or who's best placed to answer this. But um, again, um, you all should be able to, um, to communicate. So um, Mila, if you're there, you feel free to, uh, to take the floor. Thanks, Carla. Um, I'm no longer with the Northern Territory Government, but I was there for a while and it is very pleasing to hear this project getting over the line. Congratulations to everybody who did the hard work to get it there. Uh, it's a pleasure to be watching from afar. I'm now with Plant Health Australia and based in Canberra. And um, other than my congratulations, I did have a question and I suspect someone will know the answer. I'm wondering, um, I know that in first rotation, uh, quite a lot of jobs were created on the Tiwi Islands in nursery production for the um, outgrowing of the stock that became the plantations. And I'm wondering if that's an idea for second rotation and if there is likely to be um, jobs created on the Tiwis, if it's likely that that second rotation of eucalypts will be grown there on the island. Thanks. Thank you. Um, anyone, any volunteers to, to answer answer that question? Yeah, it's Mark Ashley from CPC. Um, certainly that's that's our aim. So the second rotation is a part we've done an information memorandum with our partners a midway, and certainly that's that's our aim. But at this stage, it comes back to the nature and the type of the investment, as you'd understand, Miller. Um, essentially, uh, COVID has made these conversations tricky. People haven't been able to get on site for international travel to do the due diligence. So that you know, our, our two proposals have been impacted as well by COVID. Um, but certainly that's an intent, um, but you know, it's too early to say the exact nature and type of the investment at this stage. Um, and that will need to go back to Tiwi for their um, approvals um, once we get further down the track. Did you want to add anything to that, uh, Glenn? Mark, that it's, uh, you know, it's an integral part of that uh, second rotation investment. Uh, obviously, um, you know, there's, there's you know, somewhere between 30 to 40 jobs created through a nursery located on the island. Um, we, we do feel that, you know, we're going to be able to offer employment to, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a section of the Tiwi um, um, population that aren't traditionally employed uh, in the project. So uh, we, we see there's some multiple benefits there. So we've actually designed some nurseries and, uh, and really uh, the investment into um, and the, 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 the development and building of those nurseries will be ultimately done um, by, the, by the, the second rotation investors. But yeah, we feel it's a very important part of that second rotation investment. Great. 
Thank you for thank you for that, and thanks for the question. Um, it is important that we acknowledge that this project is also made possible with a co-investment from um, the Forest Wood Products Australia um, RDC, who's worked in collaboration with the CRCNA in providing investment for this project, along with the project participants. We have Chris Lafferty um, joining us today, and Chris, I was wondering if there was anything that uh, you would like to comment about or or um, share with us today. Yeah, morning, Carla and everyone. Um, we've nearly got Melbourne weather about the same temperature as Darwin, I think, right now. <laughs> um, look, um, it's a great opportunity um, uh, to participate in this project from FWPA's perspective. We are the industry services company that um, receives um, levy contributions from the industry and a range of other funding sources uh, that's matched dollar for dollar uh, by the Australian government. And we're here to promote the development of the industry and its impacts on Australian communities. Uh, and what's a real pleasure about this project is that we have the landowners and the research team so tightly integrated and committed to this project. So everyone's giving up valuable time, and in fact, resources to apply really the state-of-the-art research that Gerd and his team can actually apply into a real case scenario and measure the outcomes I'll be under forestry terms in a fairly lengthy period of time, but doing it on the ground for real and bringing um, the new genetic and um, chemical technologies that have evolved over the last 20 years, the gains that should be seen here um, are going to be multiples of times quicker than the mainland industries have been doing developing these scientific techniques. So really fantastic to be a part of the team and also to offer our communications challenges, uh, communications ch channels, uh, excuse me, to really promote the outcome of this research to other organisations across the top end, because um, uh, with all going well, this will be a real increase to the productivity and the value add that we are getting from our plantation forest estate. Thanks, Chris. And that, um that flags another question with me around, you know, obviously um, our remit as CRC for Northern Australia is to look at investing in projects that are going to be sort of broadly applicable. And you've touched on, um, I, I guess, some of um, the work that you're doing in Tiwi, and, and I'm just interested in how, and maybe this is a question for Mark as well, how do you see um, the work that's been, that's happening on Tiwi being able to be applied um, across Northern Australia, particularly in the economic development space or the development of that, that model around um, workforce engagement and capacity building? It, it'll go much more than that. So this is a perfect little case study, I guess. So we're looking at species that meet market needs and values. Uh, to operate under the climate and soil conditions that apply across the Tiwi. So it's going to be a, a relatively unique solution uh, for a range of um, land, land areas over the north. Uh, we're developing the model here, tweaking the systems uh, that apply specifically to the Tiwi, but this can be replicated. And another project we're supporting in East Arnhem Land is looking at optimising the forest value chain um, across that area too. So the learnings are complementary, how we engage with the landowners to keep a sustainable, value-added um, and profitable business um, operating under the relatively unique but generically similar um, challenges each group, each, each group is uh, facing. So yeah, partnering up with um, Northern Territory Government, with CRCNA, um, this is a bit of a joy because it's really what we're set up to do. And um, this one's really well planned. I think it will serve as a bit of an exemplar as we can roll this process out across other uh, areas that offer good potential for the development of a forest-based industry. Thank you. I don't know, Mark, if you wanted to add anything um, to that or if Chris has done done justice to that to that response. Yeah, no, look, I, I agree with everything um, that Chris mentioned there and <laughs> with one addition as well. And it, yes, it's about that in, those engagement tools and, and providing you know, uh, understanding and and better applicability for other areas around this. But there's also a really important component of what we're doing is demonstrating to external investors that people can do um, viable, innovative, you know, cutting edge uh, business on Aboriginal land. Um, and that's really important. At the end of the day, Aboriginal land, um, it's, there's significant areas of resource that are available to commercial forestry. Um, and it's about 
connecting those organisations, local organisations, with forms of equity, to be blunt about it. Um, and having, you know, a project and a series of projects across Northern Australia that are doing that really helps investors gain the confidence um, to invest in Northern Australia in this, what is essentially still an emerging industry. So I think it's fundamental for all those engagement things that Chris explained so eloquently, but it's also about the cold heart uh, commercial confidence um, to, go, to partner with Aboriginal organisations in, in, in our industry. And Carla, it's good here, if, if I might add, it is, it's a, a unique pro project uh, as, as a number of speakers have said now, and it's important to keep in mind that it's not only uh, supporting the industry in this case, it's a, it's a research program with real research outcomes, also pushing the boundaries in what's currently possible in, times of, uh, in terms of research. For example, uh, we're using molecular marker technology on trials that have not necessarily been set up for this particular purpose. As, uh, as Chris uh, Lefferty said, it's, uh, it's a real life scenario. And on the other hand, also using molecular markers uh, for what we call utilization traits uh, has never been done before either. So there is, while it's, while it's in real terms, uh, supporting the industry in an operational sense, there is still enough room also to push the boundaries uh, uh, in, in a scientific sense. And that is, of course, what's needed also for our postgraduate students to succeed in their, in their efforts. So um, good. Just to, just following on from the the PhD um, opportunities, and and you're you're working with your team on a very specific part of the project. Um, as Mark talked us through, it's that sort of that part two. Um, Ruth Wallace and Pascal Tremblay from um, Charles Darwin University are joining us today as well. Um, and I don't know Ruth or Pascal if you wanted to sort of give us a sort of an overview of um, of the work that your students and your team will be doing, particularly in that workforce capacity um, building um, and enabling work um, and um, the progress, updating us on the progress of that PhD that you've been uh, recruiting. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, good. Uh, this is Pascal here. Um, yes, we've uh, now appointed and enrolled a postgraduate student who will um, try to pull a number of threads together in, 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 uh, in the domain of workforce development and business opportunities linked with Tiwi forestry. Um, We've got a supervision panel set up where we're gonna also benefit from the expertise of Alicia Boyle, who's uh, developing a number of projects with the Northern Territory Government, the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade, it's in that order, DIT, um, link with remote regions. So it's part of a, a constellation of projects. So we're bringing her in to make sure there's some level of consistency and we can learn from um, the experience of different regions, especially in the domain of resource employment, re resource related remote employment, um, uh, where we have a number of projects going, as well as someone from the Asia Pacific College of Business and Law who's an expert in um, development and finance to look more at the business opportunity side. We're keen to learn from the other components of the project about what these new technologies and new products especially will look like. So that's what we're gonna try to do and map very soon and what it means in terms of skills and capabilities needs for the future, as well as the historical experience of Tiwi because as everyone has mentioned it, there's been a long uh, involvement and there's been lessons and we will engage that PhD very soon with all the partners to understand and to, to get sort of the um, basic knowledge required to, to look at the future. We've got a methodology already developed, uh, which guides some of the components on assessing skills, capabilities, on aligning with the aspirations. And uh, we're looking forward to understanding what these new technology means and how they are shaping the future commercial um, opportunities for Tiwi. 
Uh, and and I would expect that some of that would also be applicable and and sort of be able to pick up and translate to to other areas um, across northern Australia as well. Absolutely, we we we're doing a lot of it's, uh, our work is usually a bit anti centric, <laughs> but we're doing a lot in the work in, in the Barclay in the Big Rivers region and interested in what's going on, of course, in Arnhem Land that we just heard about, um, and um, we will probably try to uh, sort of uh, connect, but uh, talk about diversification, of course, when we understand more where the industry is going, because we're not expert in that industry specifically, but we have been working across resource projects, services projects, and we think that it will be good to have a fairly wide understanding of, of what TWI um, or employment profile look like and what the youth are looking at in terms of the future. Um, thank you so much, Pascal. And it is a, a really unique um, opportunity that uh, the CRCNA has and in, in our view across Northern Australia to be able to bring um, people together and stakeholders together who are working on similar um, sectors and similar themes. Um, we do have forestry work happening in Queensland, obviously where we are here in Townsville. Um, we're working with Timber Queensland on developing another project, um, a civil pastoral project in Queensland. So I would expect that there would be a, a unique opportunity for us to share some of those learnings across projects. Um, and our senior project manager, Chris the Nunn, is certainly um, very, very keen to, to facilitate those discussions as well. Um, so uh, Carla, if, I, if I may add, uh, I, I probably didn't do justice to the training and, and uh, education side of thing because there's a lot of initiatives. Again, many funded partially by the NT government related to uh, new approaches to training and skills portfolios and things that Ruth might want to talk about if she's if she's online. But that's also something we're looking at in terms of facilitating uh, the um, the uh, expansion and diversification of skills to make sure that uh, when when you have a place like Tiwi, which is highly dependent on one sector for good reasons, at one point in time, we we uh, understand how the skills can be maintained and perhaps uh, transferred to other sectors where they are needed. Ruth, um, did you want to add anything um, to Pascal's comments? Oh, thank you very much. And thank you, Pascal. I think this is such a good example of building what we're calling Passport Plus, which is that passport from school into work. How do you track all of the things and how do you know what you need to be able to make that transition effectively? And how do you keep a track of all those things with so much else going on in life? So it's an online e-portfolio. It'll be mapped into the university system so you'll see how you're tracking. It means you can pick up different um, things like an OCA card or it might be aspire to the qualification you need for the next job. And it'll help you unpick what it means to work in this industry and where you might go and how those skills and those uh, qualifications are also transferable to other jobs that you might see once you start to work through that career pathway. Thanks, Ruth and Ruth, Ruth and Pascal are from Charles Darwin University. Um, I have, um, I think I accidentally had raised my hand there. Um, I just wanted to, I'm just cognizant of time approaching uh, the, the hour mark. And I, I just thought it would be interesting to throw to Chris Weston, one of the um, researchers um, and PhD students working on this project. Um, Chris, it's always interesting to get a, a perspective of, um, of students working in this space. I just thought that um, you might like to share some of few brief words about your experience um, with yourself and uh, your senior research fellow Luba and um, your other PhD student Freddie as well. Sure, well, thanks Carla. Um, yeah, just a point of clarification, um, uh, I, I'm actually the, the leader of the project with Luba and uh, Freddie's the PhD student, but together the three of us um, are having a, a very productive time uh, on the island at the moment. We've just finished 11 days of field work out there on Melville. Um, so we're looking at um, maintaining or and improving the productivity of the eucalyptus pellita when it does go in the ground and making sure that best practice um, is supported by um, excellent research. So um, we're doing a survey of the soils and growth potential of, of eucalyptus across the island and 
Uh, we've had terrific support from, um, from the people at the Yapilica Forestry Centre there. And it's, uh, it's, we've been able to get onto the island and uh, avoid uh, getting out of Victoria and getting, getting into the NT. We've been able to um, uh, get in just in time so that we can keep the research program going. Um, it, it's a, just reiterating the opportunity here for this CRCNA project to come together. Um, it's been a long time coming and it's terrific finally um, to join with um, the Tiwi and uh, uh, the Tiwi Land Council, uh, Tiwi Plantations um, Midway, um, Glen Samsa in particular, and to finally uh, get going on what I think has all the ingredients of uh, a terrific project where everyone's going to benefit um, but in particular, the, the forestry enterprise, not just on the Tiwi, but in the top end as we move into um, more eucalyptus plantations across the region um, in the future. Great. Thank you so much, Chris, um, for that. I think that's a, that's a really nice place for us to, to wrap up today's session. Um, Mark, um, I, Kim, um, Gibbo, I don't know if you wanted to have any last sort of comments or words before we, we round out, remembering that um, we are recording this presentation and uh, once I edit out my uh, technological uh, foibles at the beginning there, I will make it available on the CRCNA website and to all of the attendees and participants in today's session, you'll also be emailed a link to that to when it's available. Um, so Mark, um, I don't know if you wanted to uh, close out the session with any closing remarks. Kim and Gibbo, closing remarks. Hey, um, hey, Bob. Yeah, Kim. Huh? Yep, you're there. Everyone's listening. Yeah, yeah we want to keep, keep that forest going, right? Yep. You know, it's, it's for, you know, uh, a TV, you know, a generation coming up. So we need that up and running, keep on going yeah. for a few years. Well, young, young, you know, coming up. Yep. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the research is—you've just heard it there. This is that's the fundamental basis for this project is for future generations, and the research is obviously vital to ensuring the long-term viability of the business. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Cheers. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye.